kind of like there's a guy called Srinayar and Guru in Kerala, right? Where his mm. thing was again fighting against casteism, and then you know, one of his main precepts was like, you know, basically like, do not ask, you know, what caste, what religion, right? Like, we we come together as human beings, and that's it. Like, that's the way he kind of preached his messaging. Mm. And so I think a lot of people then who were maybe denied entry into like upper caste temples or they didn't have access to like you know social structures, they kind of like they you know what? Well, why don't we kind of build like our own sort of you know place of worship? And, and whatnot and then that kind of spun off into these different stratas within that but then in some ways it also became kind of like how they say right like we build a big big you know big home with huge walls you know it's a bit like self-preservation also becomes like self-imprisonment right so then then they all like went off on these tangents building their own like temples and yeah. creating their own little society so it almost became like you know like an antithesis of what they're trying to do in the forest, right. right rather than have like a common mingling place right where everything became accessible to everybody you you know, they all kind of said, okay, well, you're not going to accept me, then I'll just go off on tangent. I'll like build my own little parallel universe and all. I'll live in that. And so I think now what you, what I noticed is like there's this sort of subtle structures that exist a lot of times where it's not as watertight like how it used to be. But, you know, when it comes to like practical things that people do in life, right? Like what temple do you go to? Which community are you generally inclined to marry from? They still almost like fall back to that default kind of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Because even if they say, oh, you have this upward mobility, where oh you know I, I fell in love with somebody at work and she's from he or she's from like you know different let's say an upper class of society and then some people might think you and think well man this is I'm playing with fire here right like even if I can make it work with this person like the social structures are still strong enough that it gets hard for them to kind of like really you know have that the, the, I'm talking about the practical outcomes right even yeah though, I mean the only exception you might find is like two people from completely different parts of the world come together and they live in a completely different part of the world I think that's probably the only time you see those sort of things happen more frequently now. Yeah. I, I think, um, like you know, like the the technical term endogamy, 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 endogamous relationships. I guess endogamous marriages and stuff, like where you marry within your caste, right? Like that's a that's another kind of like a uh, a rigid line that castes have drawn. For those who are not familiar with the caste system, is that you're you you can only marry within your caste. Like that's the that's the very clear edict from top down. Is that you you shall not, and that's actually one of the I think one of the manus. Smriti um, excerpts I have here. I'm jumping ahead. With some- Um, it's clearly stated in that that you sh- should only marry within your, you know, you know, extremely. I guess the reason one one of the reasons I bought up bought that up was that I I had trouble class in my in my head intellectually speaking classifying that as casteism because it's like if you said if I I signed up for uh, matrimony dot com by the way in in preparation for this I I I did my best to you know yeah. Leave, leave no stone unturned as they say so i signed up for that you know i blah 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 i put on all my information and stuff like that and and even even before you get to the landing page of the first place where you put your preferences and all that like it it pre-selects you in the filtration occurs right in the sign up process it says yeah, yeah, yeah. What what cast are you? And then one drop down. And then once you pick that, what subcast are you? And then what preferences do you like? It's, it just immediately boxes you in right off the bat there. Yep. And, so you know, like I, the I, matching process, like doesn't even let you like look at things and be like, hey, you know, why don't you leave it up to the end user to decide who they want to write? Right. Like, yeah, it pre-selects for you. And what I was thinking is that you know, if if I brought that up as a as a as a example, I guess a shiny example of casteism, I'm not sure if it adds up fully because people could always claim that look. 
the reason why I'm picking somebody from the same caste is because our cultural traditions will align much more clearly, much more like uh, it'll be much more harmonious. Like I, we won't have like such a big gap in the way we go about cultural, you know, traditions and you know all of these other expectations that we have. Therefore, I'm going to pick somebody from my own caste because it makes it much simpler. I prefer it that way. It's a preference thing yeah. versus versus like you know if so I, I really can't like pin casteism to that. The place where I, I we can clearly say it's casteism is when let's say you're a brahmin person your daughter mar- goes and marries somebody from a or tries to marry somebody from, from a lower caste but the parents say look he's belongs to obc you know naidu like let's t- take my uh, obc ca- caste or not easy belongs to naidu caste so therefore we should not you should not marry him that's a clear case of casteism Yeah.